I'm Carolee Stinson. And I'm Ann Gatz. And we are your co-chairs for Stewardship. Last week, you got to hear from three members of our church family um, about how they invested their heart, their souls, and their strength into God. And today, we're going to hear from some more members, Connie and Larry Scott, Aaron Mosier, and Zach Furness. They're going to talk about how stewardship goes beyond your wallet and talks more about your wholehearted dedication to God. Stewardship uh, to me means giving your time and your talents and just your gifts in general. It doesn't necessarily have to be tithing, although that is a, a pretty big part of stewardship and giving to God. Um, so different ways we can do that is just within the church and then also outside of church, whether that's at work or in your home life, at your, with your family, at your home. Um, one of the ways that I think I do this is I help out with the soundboard here at church. Um, I try to show up early just to make sure everything's in place, so we are ready for worship whenever it starts. There's uh, another thing you can do with your in your daily life, which is a daily devotion. And that can bring you as a family closer together, especially if it's a family daily devotion. But it's also good to be in a group or something like that, because then you get inputs from someone else, and you might not have thought of it that way before. Um, so a, a, a group daily devotion or even a life group, um, we have several of those here at church. I actually wanted to just speak on uh, how I come to know Jesus. In 1967, I was involved in a car wreck. I was hit and run over by a car, uh, which caused uh, the nerve damage that I have. And at that point, I, I, Jesus brought me through that and saved my life. And I've been a follower since then. And in 2004, we lost our oldest daughter, um, which deeply impacted our family, but we uh, continued our journey and Jesus uh, helped us make it through that uh, point and we're just pushing forward and know that Jesus loves us and uh, that's kind of what brought us through. We, we feel strongly also with the, the tithing to the church. Um, we have felt since we tithe, um, it's kind of like uh, once you start giving, it just seemed like the blessings on our family have flowed. Um, not monetarily, but just uh, the impact of the church on our family has just been incredible. I'd just like to say um, it's, it's a group support system here at this church, and we're so grateful to Lydia and others who are so passionate about the children's ministry here. Uh, because of that, our daughter now brings her two sons, which makes us very happy uh, that they have a safe place to come and that they're learning about Jesus and and we can do this as a family. We've uh, been given given several opportunities here to be involved in different areas of the ministry uh, from painting the pumpkins to the uh, Nicaraguan trip, uh, the greeting, sir, um, getting the volunteers to sign up to greet. We just had so many opportunities and it's been the opportunity to uh, get to meet a lot of people and uh, it's just been fun um, and, and meeting so many people here and just kind of becoming a big family. You know, the, the church has impacted my family in a lot of ways. Uh, we've been able to build our faith, uh, get, a, get a deeper understanding of God and, and uh, really take what we learn and share it with others. My wife and I got married here in the church, and our, our, we had our children, and, and they've attended the preschool, and obviously uh, really are building their foundation, spiritual foundation, uh, through Sunday school. And uh, but but you know we take what we learn and we share it at home, and it helps impact all the decisions we make, uh, whether it's uh, you know for me coaching a soccer team or or decisions I have to make at work. Uh, the, the church and my faith impacts me every day. And then we also try to get back financially. And I remember, you know, when we first started going here, uh, I, I was I was a little bit intimidated by the idea of giving back and tithing and, and <clears throat> trying to figure out how we could uh, be able to give back 10%, uh, which was our goal. But there was a speaker who shared kind of his experience and how he had handled the, the, the idea of giving back that much. And he said, you know, what they did is they just give, gave what they could and let God do with it uh, uh, and, and to be able to serve those in need. 
But then each year they planned to give 1% more and within a handful of years they were able to get up to the amount uh, to their goal of 10%. And then I, I guess also I'll share the story and it may be familiar for you. When I was a little kid, we went out to a restaurant and when the bill came, my dad looked at it and he kind of had this sad look on his face and he said, oh kids, I don't have enough to cover the bill. You guys are gonna have to wash dishes. And, and it was obviously kind of a joke and, and he paid the bill. But I think it does relate to where if you don't have enough uh, financially to, to try to beat, meet that goal that you have of 10%, there's a lot of other ways that you can serve and use the skills and the gifts that you have to help others.